Okay, Bismillah. Assalamualaikum and good morning, uh, everybody. I'm sorry I need uh, I need to cancel yesterday's class because I have a meeting with Highway Training Unit, uh, Ministry of Works. Um, so today we're going to cover. We're going to start our topic on uh, pavement engineering. So firstly, I'm going to uh, start with some introduction on bituminous materials and then we'll look at uh, to some introduction on uh, flexible and rigid pavement. Okay, so the first part is on bituminous materials. Okay, so the word bituminous, uh, bitumin, actually um, is used uh, in the UK, in the US, uh, normally bitumen is uh, CS, apa tu? The, 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 the word that they use is asphalt. Okay. So in these notes, uh, I'm going to use the word asphalt. But bear in mind that uh, the word can be used interchangeably with bitumen. Uh, asphalt can also mean pavement in the US. So when uh, you are looking at the word, you need to uh, see the context where the word is being used. Is it uh, as a pavement, meaning that uh, uh, it means that it, uh, it is a mixture between bitumen and aggregate as a pavement, or is it uh, the, the asphalt itself, the apa tu? raw material? So asphalt is obtained from seeps or pool of natural de deposits in different, different parts of the world. So you can get from either natural deposit or petroleum asphalt. Uh, one minute. All right. So the most common source is petroleum asphalt. Lah. Natural deposit you can get uh, normally in Africa, okay. in Iraq, Trinidad, Okay, and some parts of Africa actually. Uh, and then you have uh, rock asphalt. Rock asphalt is a natural deposit of uh, sandstone filled with asphalt. So, as it says in these notes here, uh, it can be found in California, so on and so forth. But closer to home, uh, rock asphalt can be found in uh, Sulawesi, the island of Bhutan, uh, in Sulawesi lah. Okay, so they have lots of uh, rock asphalt. So this is an example of rock asphalt. This is almost like a rock, but this is actually asphalt. But uh, the content of asphalt uh, from rock asphalt is quite low. The lowest is 4.5% and the highest is about 18%. So you need to be refined quite a lot in order to get the uh, apa tu? pure asphalt. So this is another example of uh, native asphalt. Lah. <clears throat> okay, petroleum asphalt get uh, we obtained from uh, refining petroleum using fractional distillation. So there are two types of uh, distillation process. The first one is fractional distillation, which is the, the most common one, and then uh, the destructive uh, distillation. So fractional distillation removes the volatile materials. So as you know that uh, there are le different level, different components in petroleum. So you can extract uh, apa tu? The, the gases on top apa tu? Uh, of the uh, distillation tower. Okay, you get gases and then you get petrol. So you can see here from the diagram here. And then the kerosene. Bitumen is at the lowest part. It's the heaviest component of petroleum. Okay, lowest component of hydrocarbon. Uh, so, okay. So, immediately after increasing the temperature of the crude in the tube, it is injected into a bubble tower. So, this is uh, the process of distillation. Lah. Okay, it is apa tu? explaining how you actually separate the components of petroleum into uh, the output that we uh, require. Okay, in short terms, yeah, bitumen comes from the bottom of the uh, distillation tower. Okay, so this is another uh, example here. 
So at the top here, you can get the gasoline, which is petrol, like solvents. Solvents, it can be like uh, hexane, um, uh, lots of other uh, uh, solvents. And then you have kerosene, light burner oils, diesel, and lubricating oils. Then you get this, uh, all other different types of asphalt. So the top part here is penetration rate. This is the one that we use uh, in our uh, pavement construction. And then you have slow curing uh, liquid asphalt and also medium curing with liquid asphalt. So this is actually a modified version of penetration grade asphalt. You get this penetration grade asphalt, you here you, you blend it with other uh, additives, then you get slow curing, medium curing and uh, rapid curing. And then you have emulsified asphalt. So it's, it is either cation or anionic. Okay, cationic or anionic. Uh, emulsified asphalt is uh, asphalt that we you mix with water. Here. Yeah. So they have uh, they mix it with a certain chemical to change the charge of the petroleum so that it will mix with water. So we'll get into that uh, further afterwards. So in the destructive distillation process, uh, larger amounts of liquid fractions are required. So they are uh, they, they use intense heat and pressure okay, uh, to get more lighter fractions. So in the process generally involves application of temperatures as high as 600 uh, degrees Celsius and 5000 kPa pressure. So the asphalt that is obtained by this uh, destructive distillation process uh, is not widely used in paving because it is more susceptible to weather changes. Okay, So I personally I haven't uh, seen lah, asphalt that is being uh, obtained from this, this destructive distillation process. I think probably these are the, the, the asphalt that, the, that is being used to create uh, to, to, to make uh, waterproof uh, layers, something like that. Probably lah. waterproofing layers, layers uh, for houses, for buildings. So description and uses of bituminous binders. Asphalt cement. So okay, yeah, it is uh, obtained after separation of lubricating oils, semi-solid hydrocarbons. Okay, so they are very uh, viscous, uh, necessary to heat both the aggregate and the asphalt cement prior to mixing. Meaning that you have to heat uh, not just the bitumen in order to make it up to uh, liquid. You need to heat up the aggregate as well to make sure that the bond between the uh, bitumen and asphalt is good. Okay, you don't want to use uh, wet aggregates, definitely, because, especially when you are using um, uh, granite. In Malaysia, typically we are using granite aggregates. Granite aggregate has the apa tu, property. The property of a granite aggregate normally it is uh, hydrophilic, hydrophilic, meaning that it likes to absorb water. So that causes problem of stripping. Okay, when the aggregate uh, absorbs water, and you coat it with bitumen, so that water will tend to uh, make the separation between separation layer lah, between bitumen and uh, aggregate. In contrast, in contrast, if you are using limestone aggregate, limestone aggregate are actually hydrophilic. It repels water. So. Uh, for you to create pavement that uh, is durable in terms of water resistance, limestone aggregates are better compared to granite. But in Malaysia, typically we are using granite because our source, natural source is granite. Okay. Surface grade uh, used for highway pavement construction has a penetration value of 200 to 300 and the hardest is 60 to 70. So this is penetration grade. They, ha they have several different a grading system. Uh, they have American system and all that. But uh, in Malaysia, normally we use penetration grade. So you, you describe the property of the bitumen using the penetration value. Okay, I'll explain to you what how the penetration test is being conducted afterwards. Uh, but 200 to 300 penetration means that the bitumen is very soft and the hardest is 60 to 70. 
So mainly this type of fermentation grid bitumen is uh, used in hot mix and hot hot late uh, asphalt concrete, meaning that it is being mixed in a hot environment, and then it's also laid uh, as a pavement, also at a, a, a elevated temperature. And then you have asphalt cutbacks. Okay, going back here. So you have uh, place that place block. slow curing, medium curing, and rapid curing. So this three normally is being known also as cutback. Okay. Cutbacks are bitumen or asphalt that is being mixed with normally petrol, uh, petrol gasoline. Lah. Petroleum, uh, not petrol, but petrol, not petroleum. Okay, it is being uh, mixed with type of solvents, lah. Okay, any solvent, but usually they are using uh, petrol. So when you mix petrol with asphalt, the asphalt will become very liquid, very fluid. Okay, so the rate, uh, so you can actually pour the asphalt like this, because it is very, apa tu, viscosity is very low, lah. Okay. Uh, the rate where the solvent, the petrol, evaporates from this uh, cutback bitumen, cutback asphalt, is classified into medium curing, rapid curing, and slow curing. Okay, if the the apa tu, the evaporation occurs rapidly, then it is known as rapid curing asphalt. So it depends on the type of solvent that you use. So, the, it is mainly used in coal, coal lead plant mixes and road mixes uh, and also as surface treatments. Okay, surface treatments meaning that uh, you, are, you, you pour this uh, bitumen and then you can uh, spread a layer of fine aggregate or you can have the aggregate and then you spray the bitumen. Okay, spray the bitumen with no heat lah. You do not need, uh, do not require any heat to make the bitumen uh, uh, to liquid. Okay, you just can spray that, uh, directly, and then when the, the the petroleum evaporates, the bitumen will be left as a binder to this aggregate. Okay. So it is uh, coal lead plant mix. Maknanya is coal lah, tak perlu. You don't need the heat. Okay. And also surface treatment, surface treatment that I mentioned just now. Okay, you can actually mix aggregate with cut that between and spray it, okay, and then compact a bit lah. Okay. So that is uh, normally is known as a chip seal, uh, to surface treatments. You have several types of surface treatments: chip seal, uh, slurry seal, things like that. Surface treatment meaning that you have the pavement. Uh, when the, the surface of the problem uh, of the pavement, the old pavement is has already starting to de uh, deteriorate, then you can improve the surfacing using surface treatment. Just the surface, meaning that you don't have to replace the entire pavement. You just renew the surface. So you pour slurry uh, seal or chip seal uh, layer. Okay, you spread the layers on top of the existing pavement. Emulsified as uh, asphalt, uh, asphalt that's being mixed with uh, water. So usually one to 250 penetration rate uh, into minute particles and dispersing them in water with an emulsifier. So it's actually mixed with chemical. Lah. So this particle has electrical charges and therefore that does not coalesce. Uh, they remain in suspension in the liquid phase as long as the water does not evaporate. So now the evaporation depends on the evaporation of water. Okay. So this takes quite a long time, lah. quite some time lah, to, to evaporate because it's water. Compared with uh, cutback just now, it is mixed with petroleum. Petroleum, the, rep, uh, the evaporation is quite rapid compared to water. So this takes a uh, longer duration to uh, set. So asphalt merchants therefore consists of asphalt <coughs> which makes about 50 to 75 percent uh, by weight, water emulsifying as a uh, emulsifying agent, and also stabilizer. So it is used as cold lead plant mixes in road and road mixes, meaning that every, anything that is uh, being laid cold uh, that, that does not 
require heat. So it's also used as surface treatment. Okay. So and then you have blown asphalt. Uh, this is another part. Blown asphalt is meaning that the it's like the penetration grade, but it is being blown with hot air. Okay, through the uh, bitumen. Okay, when you blow it with the air, the uh, apa nama, the components of the uh, bitumen will evaporate. Okay, this is not uh, you have you didn't mix it with uh, uh, any cutback or anything, but any bitumen will have. Uh, volatile component okay, any bitumen will have volatile component so when you blow air through the bitumen the volatile co component will evaporate and you will be left with blown asphalt so blown asphalt is very thick you can see here like like dodol even even uh, tougher tougher than a dodol okay it is not used as paving material it Useful as a roofing material, automobile uh, undercoating, okay, and joint filler for concrete pavement. There is filler because it's very thick. It's almost like uh, rubber. And then road tars. So this is uh, very common in our society that we mentioned that it is tar road, tar road. It is not actually tar. It is bitumen uh, or asphalt. Lah. Tar actually comes from the uh, distillation of coal okay in the old times the roads used uh, the, the the binder that they use uh, for constructing pavement comes from tars and that task comes from distillation of coal arang batu so nowadays we are using petroleum no longer uh, using tars so tars are more susceptible to weather conditions than similar grades of asphalt so they uh they set more quickly when exposed to atmosphere okay so we no longer use uh tars as binders in, in our uh in our pavement so properties of asphalt can be uh, classified into four categories consistency aging uh, and temperature sustainability rate of curing and resistance to water action so these are the giving how fast does the uh, bitumen or the asphalt to cure and then how good uh, does the the, the, the bitumen uh, resist water when it coats the aggregate okay. aging meaning that uh, any any petroleum apa tu, based material will have volatile components okay so aging have occurs when the volatile components in the in the bitumen evaporates. So in time, uh, bitumen will become stiff, and at the end of its lifespan, it will become brittle. So it starts as an elastic, a viscoelastic material, and as you heat the bitumen, the volatile components will evaporate, and the, the bitumen will become uh, stiffer becomes stiffer and stiffer and stiffer and at the end it becomes brittle so the same case happens to plastics if you notice that if you leave plastics uh, under the hot sun for some time for example okay you start with a very flexible plastic and just leave it uh, under the sun for maybe one year okay and then you try to bend the plastic it's no longer uh, elastic or plastic it will become brittle okay so that's where the volatile components of the plastic has evaporated okay so that's why uh, they say that it's not good for you to drink hot water using plastic cups because those plastic cups will have volatile components from petroleum so once you subject the cups uh, of plastic bottle uh, to heat the volatile components in the plastic will evaporate and enter the water and we end up with drinking the water combined with volatile components from petroleum okay, so that's one of the problem that we have with plastic cups consistency meaning that if you change it in heat 
how does it behave? We want to have a, a material that we can predict the uh, the, the behavior with upper two increasing heat. Okay, so almost straight line lah. Okay, you increase the temperature from 60 for to 70 to 100, 120. So we can predict the uh, behavior of that uh, asphalt, the, the bitumen. <laughs> Variation of consistency with temperature. Okay, so meaning that you can measure the consistency using this machine, book fill, uh, rotational viscometer here. I think I'm, there's a part where I, I will explain to you the, this, this test afterwards. So let's just say that uh, this, you measure the viscosity using this machine and then you'll see that as you increase the temperature here, what is the uh, viscosity of the material? Okay. And then you can measure the aging and temperature sustainability. Okay, so when asphalt materials are exposed to natural elements such as uh, heat from the sun and UV light, something like that, it will deteriorate. Okay. So in place, in place, in time, it will uh, lose its uh, elasticity, uh, plasticity and becomes brittle. Uh, the change is caused primarily by chemical and physical reaction that take place in the materials uh, that I mentioned. Uh, the evaporation of the volatile components. Okay. <clears throat> so again, uh, aging and temperature sustainability, this is different machine. Just now, this is a rolling thin film oven machine. So this is a simulation of, uh, you simulate the aging process using this machine. I'll explain to you later like this. This is another machine major aging uh, vessel machine okay so in oxidation okay weathering apa tu, process several apa nama, factors uh, need to be considered the first one is oxidation where asphalt and material is attacked by oxygen in the air okay so it causes gradual hardening and loss of plastic characteristic of the material and then volatilization, evaporation of lighter hydrocarbons, lighter components, temperature, okay, if it is, is hotter, then of course the volatile apa tu, the uh, evaporation is going to be faster. And then the space area, thicker bitumen will have lower weathering effect compared to thinner layer. But you, for mixing in asphalt, uh, it's not advisable lah, to have too thick uh, of a uh, bitumen layer because it will build uh, it will reduce the strength of the, uh, the the pavement okay rate of curing curing is defined as the process through which asphalt increases its consistency and loses solvent by evaporation okay, factors that rate of curing volatile loss this is for cutback isn't it this is for cutback volatility of uh, solvent quantity of solvent and consistency of the base material so on and so forth so this is specifically for uh, cutback bitumen okay resistance to water action asphalt must sustain its ability to adhere to aggregates even in presence of water so actually the enemy for pavement uh, flexible pavement bituminous uh, pavement is actually water we try to avoid to get uh, water into the pavement uh, as much uh, as we can. If the bond between the asphalt and aggregate is lost, the asphalt will strip from the aggregate, resulting in deterioration of the pavement. Okay, so this is an example of um, asphalt pavement, but this one is actually designed as porous pavement. We allow water to seep through instead of uh, it become a solid uh, paving material. So this is a different thing, I think. So tests for uh, asphalt material. Okay, you have um, consistency test, which, is, which you measure the dynamic viscosity, kinematic uh, viscosity using this machine, a uh, blue field machine. So you put the sample here, and then you have the spindle sample chamber here. 
and this chamber goes into this uh, environmental chamber and you lower this spindle into the bitumen. So as you increase the heat, this spindle will turn and it will measure the viscosity of the bitumen. So you can see that as you increase the heat, the viscosity will become lower. So you can measure actually the change, how the viscosity change with temperature. And then you have, oh, let's see, love, right? Penetration test. Penetration test. Uh, you have a sample of bitumen here, and there's a, this machine is equipped with a needle. So you uh, let this needle puncture this specimen. And how deep does the needle go will be measured with this uh, gauge. So this is this will give you the the reading, uh, the penetration. Uh, value one penetration value is 0 0.1 mm okay so if the penetration is 60 penetration then the penetration is actually 6 mm lah. 0 0.01 sorry it's not 0 0.1 0 0.01 mm so 60 it becomes uh, 0 0.6 uh, millimeter Six millimeter, sorry, six millimeter. Okay. So the, the penetration is given as a range, not as a apa to single number. If it is mentioned that the penetration is between 60 70, meaning that that between uh, the penetration is going to be somewhere between 60 and 70. <coughs> And then the most, the second most common penetration grade uh, bitumen is 800. Okay, up to few years back <coughs> in Malaysia, we use 80 over 100 uh, penetration grade bitumen in all of our roads. Only recently we have changed to 60, 70. I'm not sure why the, the reason for that. Previously, Thailand is already been using 60, 70 all the time. Okay, we are using. Uh, 800 and now we are converting to 60-70 there are <coughs> good things lah. even though 6, uh, 800 is actually softer than 60-70 but because it's the softer it contains a higher value uh, higher apa tu, oh. elasticity lah. okay so the aging takes longer compared to 60-70 the aging process is longer and then you have this uh, ring and ball softening point test the ring on boil or you also known as softening point test ring and ball test so in this test, uh, you have two rings here, and this ring is being filled with bitumen. On top of this bitumen, you'll have two steel balls. Okay. So this setup is being put in a uh, beaker of water at uh, 25, no, no, it's not 25, I forgot like, the starting temperature. Okay. Maybe 25 degrees, something like that. I think it's lower than that, not, not 25. Okay, uh, because we put ice in this. It's still lower. I think it's zero. I think it's zero. So, you have to increase the heat okay, of this beaker, this water. And as the water heat, the temperature increases. You can see the bitumen will soften and the ball will drop until it touches this steel plate so the moment these two balls uh, touches the steel plate is the temperature that you consider as the softening point temperature okay so you measure this to uh, test whether the upper two the, the bitumen can sustain high temperature or lower temperature 
Okay. Typically, uh, for 60, 70, the softening point is around 50, 50 to 60 lah, uh, degrees Celsius. And then uh, durability test, thin film oven test. So in this test, you have a glass jar here. So you melt the bitumen and put it in this glass jar, a few grams of it. And okay, there are a few, several glass jar here. And then you close the oven, you heat up the oven, and this, apa tu, uh, the machine here will spin. So the, the bitumen will spread uh, on the surface of this glass jar. Okay, so this is to simulate aging uh, for bitumen that is being transported to site. Okay, so you have fresh bitumen, you mix it with aggregate, with heat, and then you transfer the uh, the mixture of pavement mixture also in hot, uh, apa tu, in a hot lorry lah kan? And then you lay it as a pavement. So within that process, the bitumen will age because it involves heat. So this test will uh, simulate the loss of volatiles or aging that happens to the bitumen uh, that occurs during transportation of the bitumen to site. Okay, this test is being used for that. Okay. The next test is the pressure aging vessel where you put uh, the bitumen in a small plate and put it in this uh, machine and they increase the heat and also the temperature. Okay, so after the process is finished, the aging that occurs to that bitumen simulates the age of a bitumen of 7 to 10 years. So it's like you are uh, taking bitumen from the site and extract it, extract from the aggregate, uh, a seven-year-old pavement. So the, the, the outcome of this machine is to simulate that. So you take fresh bitumen, put it in this machine, and subject it to, uh, apa, to aging. Lah. And then when it comes out, the property of that bitumen is similar to those uh, bitumen that, is, that has been used as a pavement for seven years. 7 to 10 years. So this is the paving uh, uh, pressure aging vessel test. And then you have this DSR test. DSR test, uh, this is the most advanced test. Lah. Okay, actually if you want to make, uh, study for PhD, using this machine alone is already enough to get all sorts of uh, properties from your bitumen. Okay, the most common value that uh, variable that we measure is the complex shear modulus, G star, and also the phase angle, delta. So it measures the elastic component and the viscous component of the material. So, mana? So, kat sini ada tu, it will uh, subject the bitumen to rotating lah. Rot not rotating, it's, it's funny. twisting, twisting the sample and then measure the elasticity and viscosity. Okay, so from these two values, the G star and the delta, you can calculate uh, the tendency for the binder to rot or to crack. So an H binder, meaning that you are your, your, your sample, you use uh, fresh bitumen. Fresh bitumen and then you test it and measure the value for G star over sin delta. So if the value is more than 1 kPa, uh, that bitumen is suitable to resist rutting. Okay, I'll explain to you next week lah, rutting, what rutting is. Rutting is when you see on the surface of the road. Let's see here lah. So you can see that the, the surface here is very flat, nicely, uh, nice and flat. But for all the uh, pavement, you can see on the wheel track here, it will have indentation. As if the uh, the tires has causing the pavement to deflect. 
only at the tire path. So that is uh, rutting. Okay. So for an edge binder, it must have uh, the value of more than one kPa. And then here, this is RTFO residue and PAV uh, residue, meaning that you take the fresh bitumen, subject it to this machine, the rolling thin film oven machine. And the next sample, you put it in the paving aging vessel machine. So for other TFO machine, the value is more than 2.2 kPa, then we can say that it is uh, good to resist rutting. So you need to have a combination lah between unaged binder and aged binder, test it and make sure that it is for the unaged more than 1.0 kPa, for RTFO more than 2.2. So you can say that it is good for resisting rutting. For the PAV residue, as you have uh, already know that PAV simulates the bitumen that has been used for 7 to 10 years. So when it has been used, the volatile is almost gone and the bitumen has uh, lost its uh, plasticity. So it will become brittle and crack. Okay. So what we want to know is that the G star sine delta is lower than 5000 kPa. If it is lower than 5000 kPa, then it is good for uh, fatigue cracking. Okay. So the bitumen will not crack. Okay, so that's the uh, testing part. And then we'll move to the uh, pavement, the, the mixture itself. So for the pavement, uh, it, it, it is a multi-layer system that distributes vehicular loads over a larger area. So it has several layers here. First, you need to have a stable subgrade, meaning that a compacted subgrade. And then you have the sub base. Okay, normally it's a crusher run, lah. Okay, six inches uh, thick of dense graded aggregate. And then you have this base layer. Okay, sub grade, sub base. This is road base. Again, yeah, sub grade, sub base, road base. Uh, road base normally is being uh, is, is using bound materials, meaning that you mix the aggregate with asphalt, but very small amount of asphalt and very large size aggregate. For this part, the sub base normally is not bound because this is just crusher run. And then you have uh, bound material here. And then the last part is the surfacing cost. Surfacing. So this surface cost can be divided into two segments, but uh, for the time being, I just show that it is a surface cost. Lah. Okay. So the, the, the reason for the different layers is that you might you, do you want to raise the, uh, but to, the height of the tire. You want to tire as far as possible from the subgrade. Because the load distribution from this tire will expand and when it reach at the bottom here, the loading intensity is going to be wider. If this layer is very thin, then a higher intensity of loading will uh, react on the subgrade. So reduce this uh, function of the pavement to reduce and distribute traffic loading not to damage the subgrade. If the sub subgrade is gone, then your, if this part is gone, if the compaction is not good or the th thickness is not enough, then if this breaks, then everything else breaks. Okay, so we need to make sure that our subgrade is stable. Provide vehicle access between two points under all weather conditions. Provide safe and smooth. Ini semua you boleh tembirang lah kan? Kalau tanya. Meet environment and aesthetics requirement, limited noise and pollution, and reasonable economy. Because if you want, uh, if, you have, if you have a lot of money, then you can just construct, uh, construct with concrete, isn't it? So the reason that we are using asphalt because it is cheaper and it works fine. Lah. Okay. If you have lots of money, then you just make it uh, using concrete. Uh, the problem with concrete is that uh, the, the noise is higher 
and the right quality is lower because this the the the, the concrete is very stiff it's very hard so you don't have the elastic property of uh, bitumen, bituminous mixture. So when you are driving on the uh, asphalt pavement, it feels much better than compared to uh, concrete pavement. But if you really have a lot of money, then you can have stable subgrade, a base, concrete pavement, and on top you put uh, asphalt pavement. Or oh, that is the most expensive one. And the most stable, most strong, uh, the strongest, <laughs> everything is good, isn't it? Because it combines the the benefits of vitamin, uh, vitaminous mixtures, concrete, and all that. But uh, I don't think it's very rare, lah. Uh, very rare. Okay, requirements of a uh, pavement structure. <clears throat> So you have you must have sufficient thickness to spread loading okay thickness must be uh, good and sufficiently strong to carry imposed stress due to traffic load so this is uh, the problem with Malaysian road we normally complain that our road is suffering we have lots of potholes damaging the uh, pavement but the thing is that one thing is the construction method lah. sometimes the, the contractors tend to uh, let's say they they lay the premix apa tu, during the rain or something like that so that is uh, totally unacceptable but even if the pavement is has been constructed in a good way okay using apa tu, the, the specifications it still cannot be sufficiently strong if the loading of the traffic is high now the problem is overloading in nation road okay so in urban areas, the problem is with garbage trucks. Garbage truck is very, very heavy. And normally those trucks is has been a patu, loaded with far beyond their uh, weight limit. So that is the one that is destroying the road. For rural areas, you can see you can see lah, what's happening. Okay. Uh, trucks, lorries with a patu. Uh, timber, lorries with uh, uh, palm oil, with palm, yeah. then uh, one of my friends uh, has conducted research that he said that all these commercial vehicles uh, to normally is overloaded by actually three times the allowable limit, three times. So how can we expect uh, our pavement to survive? Okay. So we normally we'll say that all oh, the authority is not good. This is not, this is bad. Everybody is complaining, but we rarely look at ourselves. What are we doing to our society? Okay, it's like people that is uh, complaining about uh, rasuah lah, corruption and all that. Oh, definitely corruption is wrong. Corruption is stealing, man. But if you look uh, when people drive. At a traffic light uh, or anywhere lah kan? how many people will actually uh, tap the queue you just uh, sit by by the road and just watch how many will queue cut queue jump lah jump the queue almost everybody will jump the queue isn't it jumping queue jumping is actually stealing you are stealing other people's time okay so if Everybody is stealing, so how come you want to complain about the corruption of other people? It shows, definitely shows that the entire society is, is bad. Okay? So, you cannot possibly hope for the country to improve if the society itself is bad. Okay? It's like the society is a bowl of marbles. Right? Let's say you have a 99% bad marble and 1% good marble. And then you grab a few samples from the, the bowl. If 99% is bad, it doesn't matter how many times you grab the marbles from the bowls, the majority is going to be bad marbles. Isn't it? Very little uh, samples that you can get is good marble. So, in order for us to improve, 
we need to improve ourselves. Okay? If we manage to change the marbles to good marbles, at least 50% of the marbles are good, then the possibility of you getting good marbles from that bowl is going to be higher. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You just keep, you can keep on grabbing and taking samples from the, the bowl. It will always be uh, bad marbles. Okay. Okay, lah, bukan nak cerita marbles lah. Cerita lain. Apa nama cerita apa ni? Okay, sufficient thickness. <laughs> Uh, to prevent effects of frost. So this is for apa tu, areas that have uh, frost lah. And then pavement material should be impervious to penetration of surface. Okay. We want to make sure that the rainwater, the surface runoff does not penetrate into the uh, base course and subsequently into the subgrade. If that happens, then completely destroyed lah. Okay, the pavement is completely destroyed. So uh, pavement material should be non-frost susceptible and should be skid resistant. Yeah, kita tulis panjang sikit lah. Skid resistant is the apa tu the surface lah, the surface of the road. In the, meaning that it is it has enough uh, skidding value. Uh, apa tu? Skid apa tu? Bukan skidding. Roughness lah, the roughness of the surface, so that uh, it's adequate for cars to break and stop at a apa tu, desired uh, distance. <clears throat> so if the older, older pavement will have normally a lower roughness, so it is become smooth. So in that way, uh, in those cases, you can improve the surface. If the structure of the pavement is still good, but the surface has already been polished, yeah, uh, become smooth, then you can lay a layer of uh, surface treatments lah, like I mentioned, chip seal or slurry seal. So you can find out in uh, Google lah, you can Google slurry seal and chip seal. Okay, classification of pavements, you have airport pavements and then highway pavements and parking pavements. So for highway pavement, which is our main concern here, is classified by structure, which is rigid or concrete pavement and flexible pavement, composite pavement that I mentioned just now, composite between flexible and concrete, and unpaved pavement, gravel, gravel roads. So, so for our class here, we are covering uh, mainly, uh, mainly flexible pavement and a little bit of rigid or concrete pavement. So you can see here the difference, flexible pavement are the uh, asphalt pavement. Okay, it is flexible because the the surfacing, the pavement is more or less flexible. Okay, it can move. Okay, it's a little bit bouncy, a little bit lah. So when you are driving on it, you can feel that uh, uh, what is much nicer lah. Feels nicer compared to rigid pavement. Uh, and then this is rigid pavement. So this is continuously uh, reinforced pavement, meaning that you have steel bars all the way. Very expensive pavement. Okay. Uh, continuously reinforced concrete pavement. CR, CP. Okay. This is the layers of flexible pavement. You have natural soil, uh, subgrade, subbase, road base, and surfacing. Okay. So the theory here is that you can reduce the uh, the pressure lah, the 150 psi under the uh, tire load here and when it reach the subgrade, the pressure, the load is going to be 3 psi. Okay, so all the load, the, the, the loading has been taken by uh, base and sub base. For rigid pavement, you still have the layers, okay, but the base and sub base is optional. If, if the subgrade is good, then you can just have the con concrete on top of the sub, uh, subgrade. So this is the difference. Mana saya tak tunjuk pula. Tadi. Okay. So tadi, just now, you can see the, the, the spread of the loading is like a triangle. Lah. Okay. For rigid pavement, the spread is like a slab here. Okay. Like so. 
Okay. So flexible pavement, when you compare with uh, a rigid, so flexible pavement requires deep foundation, uh, multi-layer construction, any energy consumption due to transportation of materials because you need to transport the materials uh, to hot. So you need the, the, the transportation is to be quick. You need a lot of heat to uh, heat up the, the, the mix. So it, the energy is over there. The wastage of the energy is over there. And increasing cost of asphalt due to high oil prices. Okay? So it, the price will move with uh, petroleum price. Rigid pavement is single layer, generally lasts longer and require asphalt topping due to noise or comfort issues. May require. So you can have a layer of flexible pavement on top of the concrete uh, uh, pavement. Okay, so vehicle consume less fuel on rigid pavement. Okay, because the detection is low and fuel consumption is uh, lower lah compared to deflection from apa namanya flexible pavement. So rigid pavement more economic when considering environmental and life cycle cost, costing because the the life cycle the lifespan of concrete pavement is much longer compared to rigid pavement like uh, flexible pavement. Okay. Kenapa tak ada nampak eh? Salah eh. Gambarnya ada layer actually. Ni this is what I mentioned just now lah. A reduction between 150 PSI to uh, 3 PSI. So the, the definition. It is a structure which distributes the traffic loading stresses to the soil at a magnitude that will not shear or distort the soil. Or flexible pavement here can be defined as pavement which reflects deformation or subgrade and subsequent layers to the surface onto the surface i.e. Uh, where the load is transmitted from grain to grain to contact points of granular materials in a compressive way so the loading if you look closely at the layer you're going to have grains of aggregates so the loading is taken by the uh, area that is touching between the aggregates. Okay. So three main layers. We have surfacing. Okay, this is what I mentioned just now. Here is the subgrade and then you have subbase and then you have road, road base. On top of the road base is surfacing. Okay, I've mentioned just now the surfacing can be divided into two. You can have the wearing cost and the base cost. Okay. We'll look at the, the uh, difference between wearing cost and base cost afterwards. Okay, so the surfacing, road base, sub base, and subgrade. Surfacing can be divided into two wearing cost and base cost. So, uh, <sighs> flexible pavement are so named because the total pavement structure deflects under loading. The flexible pavement structure is totally composed of several layers. Each layer receives loading from the above, spreads them and then pass, uh, passes on these loads to the next layer below. Thus, the further down the pavement structure uh, of a layer it is, uh, the further down in the pavement structure a particular layer is, the less loads it must carry. Banyaklah cerita ni kan, sama aja. <coughs> so to, to make to, to uh, get the maximum advantage of the layers, uh, the layers are usually arranged in descending load bearing capacity. The highest load bearing capacity is on the top, which is the surface cost. Okay, this is the most expensive lah, because it is the uh, it has the highest loading uh, load bearing capacity, and the lowest load uh, load lowest load bearing capacity at the bottom which is compacted subgrade and then the subbase. <coughs> okay, so this is the explanation. Lah. Surface cost is the top layer that comes in contact with traffic. 
wearable makes the uh, pavement. This is uh, base cost, layer directly before, uh, below the surface cost and generally consists of aggregates, either stabilized or unstabilized. This is the base cost. This can be bound or unbound. Bound meaning that this layer will be mixed with a little bit of uh, bitumen. So base layer is the, basically this is uh, lah. Okay, coarse aggregate. Very, very coarse aggregate. The sub base is not always needed. It depends on the property of the subgrade. If the subgrade is good, then you can skip the sub base part. And this is the more explanation. Lah. Surface cost is layer, contact with traffic loads, provide characteristics such as friction, smoothness, and con uh, noise control. Okay, rutting and shoving. Uh, resistance and drainage. Drainage meaning that it drains the uh, surface runoff. <coughs> if the surface cost here is divided into two, you're going to have the top layer which is the wearing cost and bottom layer which is the binder cost. Okay. Binder cost, sometimes they use upper two, larger size aggregate lah compared to the top layer. Top layer can be just about uh, two inches. But the easiest is that just to have the top layer and bottom layer of the same uh, same material. In addition, it prevents the entrance of excessive quantities of water uh, to the underlying base. So it resists water not to penetrate into the uh, sub-base and also sub-grade. So this is uh, where two layers, wearing cost and binder cost. Lah, eh? The wearing cost normally is uh, ACW14 or ACW20, which is the asphaltic concrete wearing cost, ACW. So 14 is the size, maximum size of the aggregate in the mix, and 20 is the maximum size in this mix. So you can use either, this is the most common lah, ACW14 or ACW20. So a properly designed and funded preservation program should be able to identify pavement surface, surface distress while it is still confined to the wearing cost. If you see a crack or potholes, you need to rectify it as soon as possible before that uh, apa nama, that, that, that problem travels into, starts to transfer into the uh, next layer. Once it's already transferred to the, 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 the underneath layer, then you need to uh, dig up everything. Dig up everything and then replace the material. <clears throat> this way the wearing cost can be rehabilitated before the distress propagates to the underlying uh, binder cost. Okay. So that's why sometimes in some road you can see that there are, it's like they are, they are pouring. Uh, Uh, <coughs> <Macam> ni, <coughs> the seal, they, they can see that the crack has occurred. <coughs> so before the crack travels into the underlying layers, they will seal these cracks with cutback bitumen. Okay, so this uh, process it itself will prolong the lifespan of the uh, pavement. Okay? If if you leave it just like, but you do, do do nothing, then this crack will propagate to the underlying layers. Okay. 
Okay. <coughs> so other type of wearing courses. So the two most common type is stone mastic asphalt and porous asphalt. Porous asphalt normally we use at parking or areas where you want the you actually want the water to seep through the pavement. <coughs> the thing with this pavement is that is it can be quite weak lah because you allow water to seep through. And underneath this layer, you will have a, a water resistant layer lah so that you can uh, shift the water to a drainage pipe. Okay. You don't allow the water to travel until the, the subgrade. So you, you have to divert the water underneath so that it will be drained into a piping system. So that is porous asphalt. So you can see here, this layer, this area here is from uh, is being made using uh, typical ACW and this part is porous. So it does not have water on the surface of the pavement. It's very nice actually because when you're using this porous pavement, you don't have splashes or sprays. So because, because water is, has traveled into the, uh, beneath the pavement. So there is no splashes or spraying. That has that's a problem that, that occurs. The next uh, type is the stone mastic asphalt, which is uh, different compared to the typical ACW, which is dense graded asphalt. The ACW 14, ACW 20 is dense graded asphalt. So when you are using stone mastic asphalt, the grading is different. So the, you can see the aggregates here is very large. Okay. It does not allow water to pass through, but it is stronger than uh, dense graded asphalt. SMA normally is being used uh, at climbing lanes where uh, trucks travel at a slower speed. And also it is used at traffic lights okay, where vehicles are slow and the, the reaction, uh, the action of turning vehicles requires stronger pavement. SMA normally is an expensive uh, pavement because it requires the bitumen to be modified with polymer. And it also needs fiber. Okay, so it needs to be uh, highly modi modified so that it becomes a strong pavement. So it is being used where vehicles is traveling at a lower speed okay, to withstand the, the impact of traffic. The thing about uh, loading, traffic loading is that faster vehicles actually impose lower loadings compared to slower vehicles. Okay, So in contrary with <laughs> what the police might want, if you are concerned with the <laughs> durability of your pavement, you might want to get the vehicles to speed up as quick as possible. Because speeding vehicle will pose lesser loading to the uh, pavement. Okay. So that's why we use SMA at traffic lights and also at climbing lanes. Okay, and then you have binder cost. So basically it's underneath the uh, wearing cost. It is still uh, in the same layer which is the surfacing. So the it's just to distribute the load. Increase the thickness so you uh, have a binder cost. And then you have the base cost. Here, this is the base cost. So, so you can see here, does the, this pavement does not have apa nama, sub base. Okay, this is the base cost, and this base cost is uh, mixed with uh, bitumen a little bit. So, typical uh, base cost. Grading is ACB. Lah. ACB is asphaltic concrete binder cost. So it is ACB 20 or ACB 28. So where the maximum size of aggregate is 20. And here the maximum size of aggregate is 28 millimeters. So it is immediately below the surface. Uh, provides additional road distribution and contributes to drainage and frost resistance. These costs are usually constructed of aggregates and uh, constructed by during apa tu, durable uh, aggregates and that will not damage by moisture. 
So in certain situations where high base stiffness is required, base cores can be constructed using a variety of HMA mixes, meaning that it's being bound with bitumen. In relation to surface cause HMA mixes, base cores usually contain larger maximum aggregate size and are more open graded uh, compared to uh, and are subject to more lenient specification because yeah, the importance is lower compared to the surfacing. So this is actually binder. There's another layer here. Okay. All right. And then sub base. Uh, sub base ni yang uh, crusheran lah. Okay, granular sub base. Material in loose condition. So sub base is between the base and the sub grade. It provides support to minimize inclusion of fines from the sub grade into the pavement structure. Fine particles, uh, soil particle. Improve drainage, minimize cross action, and provide working platform for construction. Okay, so it's easier for for to construction work to start lah because you have a granular material, stiff, very stiff, uh, not stiff lah. Apa tu? Apa tu? Compared to working on earth, ni on apa tu? Subgrade. Easier for you to work on this uh, sub base. Subbase generally consists of lower quality materials than the base cost, but better than subgrade lah, can stiff uh, lebih lebih keras. Subbase cost is not always needed, okay, depending on the type of the subgrade. Okay, for example, if basement construct over high quality stiff subgrade, you may not need the subbase. However, a pavement constructed over low quality soil, uh, such as swelling clay, okay, you, you can. You may need a uh, sub base. In this scenario, the sub base cost may consist of high quality fill used to replace poor quality subgrade, meaning that you remove the subgrade first, the poor quality subgrade, and then you replace with sub base. And finally, the subgrade, which is the uh, actual soil, lah. material uh, is the material upon which the pavement is placed. Although there is tendency to look at the pavement performance in terms of pavement structure and mix design alone, the subgrade can often be the overriding factor. So this that's why when you can see that when you are constructing road at peak areas, okay, or at swamp areas, the resulting surface, the final surface will almost always will become bumpy. Again, it's not because the problem with the surface or the subgrade or the, the sub base or road base. The problems come from the soil itself. So the soil stabilization uh, for those uh, weak areas need to be very, very good. And to improve it, it can be very expensive. So that's why if you can avoid uh, constructing a road through pit areas, okay, kawasan apa tu? Uh, pit area apa? Bakau eh? Gambut. Kawasan gambut. Okay. You, you need to uh, try to avoid it lah, because it's very difficult and very expensive to construct. Although pavement wearing cost is most prominent, the success or failure of pavement dependent on the subgrade. Subgrades can compose a wide range of materials, although some are much better than the others. Means, tak, tak faham lah kan? Next is the uh, coatings between the layers. Okay. The first coating here is the prime coat. So you have filled in the sub base and base. On top of the base, normally you will spray a layer of prime coat. Okay, heated bitumen. You just spray it. So that is known as prime coat. And then you have the binder course. If the if, if the you have a two components of the surfacing, you have the binder course. On top of the binder course will be the tack coat. And then you have the pavement. Uh, for new pavement, normally we don't have the seal, seal coat unless the it is required to have it. Apa tu? Another another layer of coating. Okay, so this seal coat for for old pavements lah that has lost apa tu, uh, friction properties on the surface, you can seal it and then put in chip seal or slurry seal. Okay, so the important part here is the prime coat and the 
that code. Next is the rigid pavement. Rigid pavement are those uh, who can sustain, which can sustain, uh, which contain sufficient beam strength to be able to bridge over the local subgrade failures. Or it also can be known as uh, the load is transmitted through beams action of slab in rigid pavement. Or you can say that rigid pavement are those which <coughs> reduces stress concentration. Of course, like, it reduces the stress and concentration because it is entirely made with concrete and distributes the reduced stresses uniformly under the slab. Like this diagram lah, just now. Like this one. Nah, dia pun. Yang mana kat sini. <laughs> okay. So rigid pavement are so named because the pavement structure deflects very little. Okay. And the, the load spreading is almost uh, equal. Lah. Okay. Very even, even distribution of the loading. Due to the high modulus of elasticity of the surfacing cost. A rigid pavement structure is typically composed of PCC surface. Uh, Concrete, concrete lah, concrete surface built on on top of either subgrade or underlying base cost. Okay. Guys, please give me uh, two minutes. I'll get back to you. Okay, so basic components of uh, concrete pavement, uh, it is rigid, lah, does not deform under stress. Uh, concrete, air and train increase resistance to frost damage and de-icing salt condition. This is uh, for uh, snow areas lah, where they normally they will pour salt on top of their pavement to repel the, uh, the snow. Reinforcement may be bus or mesh, can be bus that uh, like this, or it can be uh, wire mesh, like uh, the one that you use in a slab. Okay. So continuously rigid pavement are ha have heavy reinforcement, like I showed you just now, and then it also has a joint used uh, in a non-continuous pavement to allow for thermal movement. So you have joints here, okay, so that in this in this case, uh, the joints is connected with double bars. 
So in this type of pavement, the road can move lah. Can move uh, with the act of uh, heat. Okay. Includes filler and surface sealant. Rigid pavement laid as a single layer by concrete paver, like so. This is where it is uh, one single pavement, continuously uh, concrete, continuous concrete pavement, continuously reinforced concrete pavement. It's not by slabs. So because of its rigidity, the pavement structure distributes loads over a wide area or at most two structural layers. There are other types of surfaces uh, like it is uh, jointed or continuously uh, reinforced. Okay. So this is the jointed uh, plain concrete. Okay. It has several, uh, it is connected with several slabs and then you have dowel, dowel bars. And then you have the continuously reinforced. Here you have uh, reinforcing steel. Or in this case here, this is wire mesh. Okay. So structure of um, surface cost. Uh, structure if, if this is the top layer, like right? surface cost, which consists of uh, PCC. This is slab, Portland, uh, Portland cement, concrete slab, uh, reinforced or continuously reinforced. Base cost directly between the PCC layer, and then you have the sub base. Basically, the the theory for the base cost and the sub base cost is the same with flexible pavement. The difference is just the surfacing part. For the surfacing part. Is the layer in contact with traffic made by PCC or uh, RCC? RCC is actually roller compacted concrete. This is slightly newer technology where you, you mix the concrete like you mix the typical flexible pavement and you pour it and then you roll it just like uh, uh, a flexible pavement. It has different uh, properties, different uh, cement. Uh, mixture properties to allow it to be compacted as it is being rolled. Uh, it provides characteristics such as friction, smoothness, noise control, blah blah blah. In addition, it serves as a waterproofing layer and sama lah, waterproofing layer. The surface cost can vary in thickness but it's usually between 150 millimeters and 300 millimeters. Okay, figure shows 300 millimeter surface cost. Siapa yang mau masuk ni? Dah nak habis lah. Okay, pavement comparison. Again, sama juga macam tadi kan. Uh, for flexible pavement, deep foundations, multi-layer construction, energy consumption uh, is lower, uh, higher sorry, uh, due to transportation of materials, increasing cost of us sama. Ni yang tadi punya slide. Okay, so this is again the uh, load is up uh, comparison in terms of loading. And last one, uh, cepat sangat saya ada. Load distribution, uh, the, the, the comparison lah between flexible and rigid. Uh, load distribution in terms of bituminous surface, this is concrete surface, uh, load capacity, uh, thickness. Uh, influenced by strength of pavement, shorter lifespan, higher maintenance cost. So this is definitely true, lah, higher maintenance cost. And you need to have a scheduled maintenance. Instead of leaving the pavement uh, subjected to loading, you need to have every few years, you conduct the maintenance. You put up, uh, put in apa tu? surfacing layer, uh, not surfacing layer, apa tu? Uh, slurry seal, for example. Okay, you fill in the cracks. So you, if you have a scheduled maintenance, very good system of scheduled maintenance, then the lifespan is definitely going to be increased. Compared with, uh, you just leave it as it is, 
and then after the lifespan ends 10 years you you scrap everything and construct a new one so that is uh, much more expensive and it's also to not user friendly lah because towards the end of the last pen you already have cracking rattling and uh, potholes so in the next lecture i'm going to cover the um apa tu defects road defects okay any questions patutnya saya kena include road defect dekat lecture ni Ah, uh, doctor, I have one question. Yes. Ah, uh, so when we talk about the permeable permeable road, that's mean the asphalt use is porous asphalt, lah. Yes, correct. So there's no other kind of asphalt rather than porous asphalt to construct the permeable layer. Yeah, porous asphalt has different gradings, different kind of mixture, but the objective is the same to make the the pavement porous. Uh, okay, understood. And the second question, uh, hmm. why sometimes uh, I see that the engineer use uh, bamboo as the road reinforcement for the flexible pavement? Eh? Like in my area, the engineer like lay, lay out the the bamboo, basically a bamboo, and then they cover with the some kind of plastic. Uh, and then, yeah, why, why they use bamboo? Is it any requirement by the uh, JKR? Is it JKR road? Uh, yeah, should be. It's because it's local local road. Uh, it, normally that that type of construction is uh is a substitute for geotextile. Okay, meaning that the, to improve the connection between the pavement to stabilize the the soil. So instead of using uh, geotextile, they use different uh, materials lah, as a substitute. Okay, you you normally see be, be, be below the pavement, uh, just above the uh apa tu subgrade they will have the textile on it to prohibit uh, penetration of water something like that so is the this, those kind of things those are soil improvement apa tu measures it's not structural definitely not structural okay doctor thank you okay welcome doctor i have a question yes uh, based on road maintenance, right, doctor? Um, mm. I've seen in my place they used uh, CIPR, uh, the co-in-place uh, recycle machine uh -huh. for the road, road uh, maintenance. How long supposed are it supposed to sustain, doctor, the, the road when they use CIPR? Yeah. Because uh, I don't think so. It, I mean, it can be uh, other factors like uh, loading and water and drainage and stuff like that. But when you use CIPR, um, mm. within, uh, I can say that it should at least sustain for a few months or a few, I mean, a year maybe. And then at that place, it's like, um, you know, there's a lot of loadings, you know, like go cars going on and all. But yeah. I feel like the, the, uh, the lifespan is quite less. Not, <laughs> Uh -huh. It is less. The, yeah, the it thing is less. Here, the thing here is they want to, macam mana, jimat sikit lah, save a little bit of money. Meaning that it's like uh, you are doing uh, frequent maintenance compared to constructing the actual pavement. Okay. Macam tu lah. <laughs> Dia punya, that's so the theory lah. Oh, okay. Ah, welcome, welcome. Okay, okay. Thank you, doctor. Eh, welcome. We, in the future, we are, will be getting more and more of uh, this kind of uh, recycled materials. Right? Like the one that you mentioned using CIPR or RAP, Recycled Asphalt Pavement. So because, but yeah. But doctor, doesn't it affect the layers of the pavement, doctor? Uh, normally, it's just the surfacing. Uh, they, they they mill the surface and then they they, they change it, isn't it into the. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. They just take the thing and gaul and then they. Yes. Temper yes. it, yeah. Uh, they, they they don't touch the uh, underlying uh, layers. Okay. 
So it's just the top part they just do it. So it doesn't yeah. affect the other layers. No, it doesn't affect that. Okay. It's like maintenance lah. More, more or less lah. Mm. In the future, we're going to use more RAP, recycled asphalt pavement. The the milling waste that they they mill the surfacing. Normally nowadays they just just lump uh, in one place. Okay. So now we are going to starting to use uh, those recycled materials. Recycled materials they definitely the the strength is lower lah compared to newer materials but we cannot afford to continuously use uh, new aggregates, new bitumen. We need to start to use uh, recycled materials. Otherwise, the life cycle cost of the construction of this uh, pavement is going to be very high and the environmental cost is even going to be higher. Mm. Like that. Mm. Understood, Doctor. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, anyone else? Okay, if there is no question, so uh, next week is week 14. Okay, uh, so I still owe you two more class. So I need you guys to discuss lah. When can we have our replacement class? Um, Night time also is possible. Night time also is possible. I just need to uh, clear up all the syllabus so that um, uh, we can you can get ready for your exam. If possible, try not to encroach into the study week. But if it is you can you cannot help it, then week fourteen and then the following week is the study week. We still can have class at that 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 time lah. But the thing is, we need to come up with two. Uh, uh, two times, two slots for our class. Okay, about your exams, you're going to have four questions. Two questions is from the geometric part and two questions is from this pavement part. I'll discuss the exams, the tips uh, in the last final class. Okay, so I'll ask, uh, I think I'll ask uh, Yishun, uh, Yishun to facilitate the discussion on the uh, to the slots the replacement class lot okay guys thank you very much i'll see you next week uh doctor yes uh can you upload these slides on the spectrum yes 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 okay. i'll just complete this slide. okay thank you doctor thank you welcome thank you doctor welcome hey doctor welcome thank you doctor thank you doctor thank you doctor welcome, welcome. thank don't you doctor welcome don't forget your attendance in spectrum